How could I not pull this stamp from the box? Just look at the artwork. A beautiful view of buildings on stilts in water with boats or canoes in the foreground. And we can tell that this is an image of the village of Ganvier. Well, that's according to the label on the left. And this stamp is from, or was from, the Republic of Dahomey, as we can see in French. A place that I know nothing about. The stamp has a face value of 25 CFA francs. And yes, this is a used stamp. It was socked on the nose. The postal worker that applied this postmark was a true marksman, giving us a wonderful SOT and full postmark in the center of the stamp. Just perfect. The town that the stamp was sent from was Mallonville, and the date, well, I was able to get that this was sent on the 30th of March, but I'm unable to make out the year. This stamp, however, was issued in 1960 and is a large definitive measuring 51 by 30 millimeters. I have had Dahomey stamps in my collection ever since I had a collection. But when I started collecting, I didn't know where it was and I probably looked through a modern atlas and didn't find it. In fact, if I was looking at this particular stamp that we pulled from the box, I would have probably said that this is part of an island in the Pacific instead of a lake in Africa, which is where it actually is. And things are a lot easier to look up today than when I started collecting back in the early 90s. We didn't have Google. So get your Dahomey stamps together. Let's go exploring. Dahomey was right here in West Africa, where the country of Benin currently exists today. It was actually a kingdom from approximately the 1600s through to 1904. It had a king, a royal court, and a military that was feared by its neighbors and the Europeans. The Dahomey Kingdom was very much involved in the Atlantic slave trade. It had formed relationships with European powers and traded slaves with them. Some were sacrifices from their own kingdom, but most were captured people from neighboring groups and tribes as the kingdom expanded and conquered their lands. This was until the slave trade began to be suppressed in the mid-1800s and eventually cut off by British blockades, changing the kingdom's relationship with Europeans until being colonized during the scramble for Africa. Just a, just a quick note for all my viewers, most of you already know this, but these episodes cover such a high level overview of a country's history. And I do that because I'm rushing to get to the part about the stamps. But I encourage you to go and learn more about those histories because they are incredibly interesting. So I've included a number of links in the video description for you to go ahead and learn more. Now, the scramble for Africa. It is impossible to talk about the history of Sub-Saharan Africa without discussing the scramble for Africa. Seven European powers divided up Africa for themselves and in just a few short years colonized almost the entire continent. In 1881, 10% of Africa was under European control. And just 33 years later in 1914, European powers claimed 90% of Africa. The British, the Germans, the French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italians, and the Belgians carved up the continent and essentially invaded Africa. And as we can see on this map, the French had a focus on West Africa, where they would clash with the Kingdom of Dahomey. At first, the Kingdom of Dahomey was okay with the French setting up protectorates along the coast in 1878. But after tensions grew between the French and the Kingdom of Dahomey, they actually went to war twice. First in 1890 and then again in 1892, in which the Second Franco-Dahomian War lasted two years and resulted with a French victory, and the kingdom then became the colony of French Dahomey. Oh, and one very interesting thing about all this, something that has nothing to do with postage stamps, but I totally have to mention it, is that there was an all-female regiment that used to fight for the kingdom of Dahomey. They were named by Europeans as the Dahomey Amazons. They were described as fearless, extremely well-trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and were effective even against an army of superior weaponry. They were frontline soldiers who were instrumental in conquering neighboring tribes and fighting against the French, and it is also believed that they served as royal bodyguards for the Dahomey kings. 
Now, they were eventually defeated in the Second Franco-Dahomian War, but they left an impression that made its way into pop culture. Any comic book fans here? The Dahomey Amazons are the inspiration for the Dora Milaje, the all-female special forces unit for the nation of Wakanda in Black Panther, in which they share a number of similarities with the Dahomey Amazons and were a prominent feature on screen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They've also been portrayed in other literature, theater, movies, and so on. So how about that? Inspiration from reality. Now I really think we should start talking about stamps. Okay, so from the time of the Second Franco-Dahomian War, colonial stamps were being used by the French, and they featured the word Benin, first on French colonial commerce key types, and then actually inscribed Golf du Benin, or just Benin, on the commerce and navigation key plate series. These are considered to be modern-day Benin's very first postage stamps, stamps that were used in the area and featured the country's name. In this case, the French were using the name Benin long before a country named Benin actually existed. The Gulf, or really the Bight of Benin, is a stretch of coastland that is slightly recessed and curves along today's Ghana, Benin, Togo, and Nigeria. And the French presence in 1893 were using that name, Benin, for that region. And so we can see that they placed it on the postage stamps sending mail from that area. Now, this turns out to be temporary because in 1899, the name Dahomey appears on the stamps. As France adopted the name Dahomey for the colony back in 1894, these three stamps are my earliest stamps from that region, spanning 1899 to 1905. These are the commerce and navigation stamps that France used for its territories, an efficient way to print stamps for all possessions abroad using the same design in multiple colors, but just change out the name. While the deep purple 25 centimeter stamp was issued in 1899, being the first stamp to feature the name Dahomey, I was able to use the retro reveal site to see the hidden postmark date. And it seems that this was used on the 6th of September in 1906 from Porto Novo. I was of course hoping for an 1899 postmark date before the turn of the century and the year this stamp was initially in use in Dahomey, but it's still cool to have the first Dahomey stamp to feature that name. But 1906 is an important year because Dahomey stamps start to feature some additional words. Afrique Occidentale Francaise, French West Africa, a federation of French colony territories that included Dahomey, Ivory Coast, and Upper Senegal and Niger, for example. These colonial territories each mark their affiliation to the West African Federation with the words Afrique Occidentale Francaise, or eventually just the initials AOF. So keep a lookout for that. Those initials AOF or Afrique Occidentale Francaise, they will be on stamps from 1906 into the 1940s. I found a couple that have a similar view to the stamp that I pulled from the box. Houses on stilts or pile houses in the water. This one has AOF initials, while this one has French West Africa spelled out. The key difference between these two stamps is of course the presence of Marshal Philippe Patin's portrait in the corner. This could be a topic on its own, and I've briefly covered it in a previous episode, but it's about Vichy France, a puppet state for Nazi Germany after France was invaded. These stamps were printed with Philippe Patin's face, but none, if any, were actually sent to the French territories, many of whom actually didn't side with the puppet state and defected to support Charles de Gaulle. I don't want to derail us here because it is really interesting, but perhaps we can save this for another discussion at a later time. Now, after 1942, the stamps of French West Africa begin to be issued as a single identity, one stamp for all. This being the first one, Marianne with a Phrygian cap overlaying an olive branch, and it is a semi-postal. This design was used in other French territories as well, but shortly after, French West African stamps began to feature imagery of beautiful landscapes, people, and other topics from its member countries. The location would be tagged in the artwork, but could be used anywhere throughout the Federation. Now, I actually made a mistake when I was getting this particular cover, but it's gonna help prove a point. This cover was sent from West Africa in 1949, 
but it's not sent from Dahomey, which I thought it was when I saw the stamp. Had I paid attention to the postmark and not the stamp, I would have seen that this was actually sent from French Sudan in October of 1949. It bears two French West African stamps, a 10 West African CFA franc stamp with soldiers and this lower value stamp with a Dahomey subject, as we can see at the bottom of the stamp. It's a villager using a machete to cut something. I, don't, I have no idea what he's cutting. What is that? Anyway, it's a fine example of how the stamps were used throughout French West Africa. So this was a happy mistake. Now, French West Africa issuing stamps as a single identity took place from the 1940s right through to 1960. And this is when French West Africa actually broke up and each of the territories gained their independence from France. Dahomey gained its independence in August of that year, but already in April was issuing its own stamps as an independent country. The Republic of Dahomey's first stamps included the stamp that I pulled from the box, including two other definitive stamps with different imagery. So this stamp is not only beautiful, but also very special, being that it was issued first. Now I actually have all three of these stamps, but right now I only have two of them. That's the 25 and the 500 West African CFA franc stamps. The third one I had on this desk a little while ago, and then I accidentally pushed it into the stamp box that was sitting on the floor. And once it gets in here and gets shuffled around, I'll never find it again, but you'll just have to believe me. Now, what I do have that we can explore right now is a pretty cool cover that was sent in 1963 from Dahomey with that actual stamp, the first stamp that we pulled from the box. So let's check it out. Sent to Stockholm from Dahomey, this cover is actually stationary from Dahomey's Chamber of Commerce, well, Dahomey Niger, with Niger crossed out in ink. There are two stamps on the cover. Our stamp that we pulled from the box, a 1960-25 West African CFA franc stamp bearing a postmark and cancel, along with an additional blue 20 CFA franc stamp issued in 1961 bringing the total postage to 45 West African CFA francs, a value that allowed this letter to travel internationally via plane. Looking at the postal markings, this was sent on the 6th of February in 1963, a Wednesday, and from the port city of Cotonou, one of the largest cities in Benin today. The cancel that accompanies the circular date postmark on the top right appears to be advertising the country's animal reserve park Penjari or Penjari, which is located in the very north of the country bordering Burkina Faso. I really think this is a cool cover because not only does it have this very special stamp, this first stamp from the Republic of Dahomey, but I also find it really interesting that it is from the Chamber of Commerce and has Niger of Dahomey Niger crossed out. The obvious theory that I'm going to go with is that the Chamber of Commerce must have been a joint office serving both Dahomey and Niger prior to 1960, when they were all part of West Africa, or French West Africa. Both of them were French colonies. And on the map, you'll see that Niger is a landlocked country, so it would have probably relied heavily on Dahomey to have access to a port and the ocean which would make sense that the Chamber of Commerce would then be servicing both. But after 1960, the office must have split and no longer servicing both Niger and Dahomey, and the Dahomey office must have kept their stationary for some time. This is 1963, and they're still crossing out Niger. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I didn't spend too much time looking into that, so it's just a theory. Now, the Republic of Dahomey actually issued over 700 stamps from 1960 when it gained its independence right through 1977, featuring a variety of topics that range from local themes and landscapes to not so local topics. And in 1975, while the country was going through some turbulence and governmental changes, it changed its name to Benin, apparently favoring the name due to its ethnic neutrality. Not everyone in the country has roots that tie them back to the kingdom of Dahomey. So in 1976, the stamps had a country name change to the People's Republic of Benin. Yes, it was a People's Republic, all the way until 1990 when it shifted to just the Republic of Benin as the country's name today. Okay, so did you get that in sequence? Benin, Dahomey and its dependencies, Dahomey AOF, 
French West Africa, Republic of Dahomey, People's Republic of Benin, followed by the Republic of Benin as we know it today. Surprisingly, I don't have too many modern Benin stamps post-1976. Just a few CTO or cancel to order stamps. But I have tons of Republic of Dahomey stamps, several with CTO postmarks as well, but several mint. So they were generously producing them for the collecting community and therefore those are really easy to come across today. One thing I do want to say is that these French territory stamps, such as the ones that we've been looking at from the Republic of Dahomey, are in my opinion some of the most beautiful stamps that have ever been printed. Everything about the artwork of French territory stamps catches my eye, from the use of multiple colors to the selection of local topics and themes and the use of people subjects, not to mention just the engraving work itself. They are incredible. It's just my opinion, but I really think they are beautiful. Now, let's talk about the subject that is on this beautiful French territory stamp from Republic of Dahomey. The village of Ganvier, as we found on these two stamps as well, with wooden boats floating between stilted homes on the water. This village is known as the Venice of Africa, and it is incredible. Located on the southern tip of Benin in Lake Nuku, it is home today for some 20,000 people, and it's a thriving lake village that has become popular for tourists to visit. It was actually formed in the 17th century by the Tofino people that took to the lake to avoid being captured for the slave trade by the warriors of the kingdom of Dahomey. The lake was actually considered to be sacred and so for religious reasons the kingdom of Dahomey did not enter the lake to fight and capture slaves. So the lake became a safe haven for the Tofino people just as long as they don't go back to shore. So they literally built their homes on a lake which has of course a source of food and became a sustainable way of living. This town of Ganvier is a fully established town, complete with homes, businesses, fish farms, and a boat-based transportation system. Another stamp that has caused me to look into a place and history that I otherwise would never have learned about. This episode taught me about Benin's history, the Kingdom of Dahomey, French West Africa and this amazing village of Ganvier. Let me know in the comments below if you have stamps from Dahomey or Benin. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.